we all have said till now is what we have seen what we have not spoken about is why what is it that's what gets us really curious right what is it that makes these substances different from these substances we call these metals we call these non metals there are clear distinctions between the two all that we discussed right all of these show this all of these show these properties right there could be some exceptions of course like any classification we make right any time we try to divide nature into boxes like we discussed in previous chapters nature is going to always say hey hey there are a few i won't let you all of you know i won't allow to follow fall into these boxes so there will be some things that lie outside but predominantly of metals and non metals and they are so different so the questions you need to be asking and you will find yourself asking are what is it that makes these two different and all the keen ones amongst you as you follow along with great focus throughout this chapter will notice that the answers to this question this is our fundamental question what differentiates what is the fundamental thing that's different between metals and non metals the lighting theme of our chapter and the more you begin to focus in you'll begin to find out that the answers to this are hidden throughout this chapter and the more curious you feel the more you will be getting them out so now that you're beginning to uh, appreciate the basics and the obvious things about metals little things like luster and little things like sonorousness high melting points right that's what we said you burn it for a long time for a long time nothing happens and then it begins to melt hardness so things that are very obvious as you see them now that you've already seen some obvious things let make let's make it a little more fun by stating some more obvious things so these are all what metals do then what do non metals do because they've been named that way right metals and non metals what we will be discussing about is not even about what non metals do but about what they don't do now be prepared to be a little annoyed because what we're going to say about non metals is very very obvious so what do metals have they have luster what do non metals have we don't know but they don't have luster right so non metals are not lustrous they are not malleable yeah you can't you take a non metal and usually you start beating it up they just break into pieces or just remains as it is it doesn't become beaten into sheets beautifully hmm they can't be drawn into wires they usually don't have very high melting points yeah they kind of melt a lot easier they usually are bad conductors of heat yeah now that's what we meant right when we said that you have an object that is it's a metal you start feeling a lot more heat from it it reacts much more to its atmosphere because it's a better conductor now the questions you're going to have right now are one of the most important questions is what is it that differentiates these two fundamentally that causes these things we want you to keep this question in mind we know that whenever we try to create a classification things are going to happen that break this what happens we find out is that there is a metal you may not have heard of it because it's not a very commonly found metal called cesium and another one called gallium so as you can see these two metals we call them metals but they have funny the low melting points to the point where you keep it on your hand they will melt ooh a metal that melts in your hand so these don't follow the rule that metals typically do of having a very high melting point so what we are finding here is we have categories and these are exceptions now the most interesting thing are these exceptions because they don't follow a rule which means that there is something very 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 interesting about them so you might begin to hold these questions what exactly different you might have one more question as well if they have such low melting points why do we call them metals we might as well call them non metals but the point here is that there are so many categories or so many things criteria based on which you decide what's a metal so just because a material does not satisfy one of them it might satisfy a lot of others so there is a reason why these might still be called metals so hold on to that question it's a little bit like this right all of you know that there are mammals and non mammals yeah mammals are supposed to be warm blooded and you know things that are not mammals are considered to be cold blooded and things like that one of the main characteristics about a mammal is that it gives birth to live young but you know there are duck billed platypus lays eggs but it's still considered a mammal why exactly now that's interesting right now you might not know this or you may already a shark gives birth to live young it doesn't lay eggs so shark gives birth to live live young but it's still not considered a mammal so it's something like that right we build categories but there are always creatures that fall under like a spectrum where they follow some of those and some a lot of these or some of this and a lot of that so you're kind of having to make a decision as to where to put these and you kind of put it in one of these two places it doesn't really make much of a difference once you understand the real depth of what's happening here so you understand there are some 10 things and if something follows eight and follows two of the other category you still call it a metal so cesium and gallium as we know i have very very low melting points but they still metals now iodine is not a metal it's kind of like a Yeah, it doesn't show any other properties, but it is lustrous. So it begins to start piquing your curiosity, doesn't it? How can a substance that is so different all of a sudden show one property alone that a metal does? 
So similarly, we said that metals, the non-metals usually have low melting points and are not very hard, right? Metals are supposed to be hard. But it turns out, even though most metals are hard, the hardest substance known, diamond, is a non-metal. It's, it's a form of carbon. It's a form of carbon. How many states does carbon exist in? Yeah. Interesting question, right? So carbon happens to exist in two forms. How are these two forms different? What exactly differentiates the different forms of carbon? Now, these different forms are called allotropes. You might like remember that, but it wouldn't mean anything if you don't really understand what's happening. So these allotropes, one of them is diamond, the hardest substance known. Oh, already one more exception. And another one is graphite. Now, one more thing about non-metals is they don't conduct electricity and heat. Now, why are these two related so, so often, right? Something that conducts heat also usually conducts electricity. So some connection there. So one more question we've kind of gifted you. So this graphite, what it does, a form of carbon, an allotrope of carbon, conducts electricity. Ooh, a non-metal once more showing an exception. And another interesting thing is that one of the fundamental things we found about metals is they are hard, right? They're really hard. But it turns out that there are metals called alkali metals. Yeah. So we are going to talk about these metals, very special metals, very, very, very active, you know, very, very funny metals. Those can be just cut with a knife. Talk, talk about hardness, right? They can be just cut with a knife. They, they, they behave like soap. So you cut them with a knife and it, and it works, which means they're very, very soft. So one more exception that we have here. But the most important thing right now is not in remembering these exceptions or the properties. Metals are lustrous. Metals are ductile. Metals are malleable. Non-metals are not. You know, you have a table in your mind and you remember this, remember that, remember this, remember that. And then you also take pride in the fact that you remember it just the right order, right? Luster comes first and then ductility and then malleability. And then, oh, wow, isn't that wonderful? Yeah, but notice what happens as your focus shifts from that to knowing what it is to the questions of why. If you already haven't had this question, the question we want you to focus on is why or what fundamentally is making or creating all these properties. And as you begin to think about that, you might also begin to ask questions. Silver is the best conductor of electricity. It's a metal, right? Gold is the most ductile element known, right? At least as far as the records go. So it says that one gram of gold, you can take about two kilometers of wire. Now, the question we want you to focus on is not remembering that silver is the most or the best conductor of electricity, but asking, what is it that, what is it about silver that makes it do this as compared to all of the substances that we know? It's a much better question to ask. So as your mind focuses on the why questions and goes towards the basics, keeps digging towards the basics that are, that are going to make it so that everything else seems obvious so that you don't have to remember it. The one question we want to tell you or the one kind of hint we want to drop is that the answers to all these questions does not lie in the level at which we watch the world. We see lamps, we see tables, we see the sky, we see buildings. But at this level, it's just way too hard to understand what's happening and why these are all different. They all look the same to us. Yeah, except for the simple physical properties that we use to differentiate them. Like this is shiny, this is not shiny. This is hard, this is not hard. Yeah, too superficial. If you need to understand this really, really deeply, we have to do what we did even in our previous years to understand chemistry. Is to do what they did in the movie, Honey, I Shrunk the Kids. Shrink yourself so small. And isn't that something that's funny to do? Because when you go become really, 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 really small, what appears smooth and simple at this level completely changes as you go down. And as you begin, if you like me, like to understand things deeply, as you go inside, you know that at the microscopic level, you begin to have completely different structures, which we call atoms. And atoms come together to form molecules. They come together to form bigger and bigger and bigger chunks. And it's, it's in the way these things come together and it's in the way these things split apart and behave and move around from which all these other things come. So this is one of the questions for which the answers lies, answer lies hidden somewhere in this chapter itself. So we urge you to keep looking around with these questions in mind. So we've raised a lot of questions, if you notice, in this one module itself. And so to get into the, the first step of getting into the microscopic process or the atomic level is to understand and try and play around with these at the chemical level. So instead of looking at it and trying to understand what the physical properties are, yeah, even though the difference between physical and chemical properties is a pretty interesting one, we want you to pursue that question as well. So we've added one more question. The real thing that we want to do is, along with those physical properties, also in our next module, try and understand what happens to these metals and what happens to non-metals as we begin to start playing with various things. What, what, is, what happens if we play with air? What happens if we play with water? What happens if we play with some pretty interesting substances called acids, which you've just seen in your previous chapter? So the more this begins to happen, the more you begin to understand what makes metals what they are. 
So let's do that in the next module.